Welcome to Champ Week, presented by Principal. It's being called the biggest sports event in the history of the state of South Dakota. The Summit League Championship game between the Coyotes of South Dakota, who've never been to an NCAA tournament, and the Jackrabbits of South Dakota State trying to win this tournament for their third straight year. Both teams breeze through the semifinals. SDSU hammered North Dakota State by 21, and South Dakota rolled over Denver by 18. Clay Maffick and former Illinois sharpshooter Sean Harrington joining you here from Sioux Falls, where it's going to be a raucous crowd. And, Sean, these were clearly the two best teams in the Summit this year. Yeah, both of these teams played extremely well throughout the year. One and two, they split the season series, both teams winning on their home court. This is what you want, the rubber match. Decided all right here, NCAA bid on the line. Terrific crowd on hand. Two best teams, it's going to be a lot of fun. They've met 222 times in their long history, but never with an NCAA tournament berth at stake, and that'll be the case here tonight. Here's a look at the South Dakota State bench, the one seed. They finished two games ahead of South Dakota in the Summit League this year. And the lineup for the Coyotes of South Dakota will look this way under head coach Craig Smith. Matt Mooney, the runner-up for player of the year in this league. Simpson, Peterson, Trey Burge Manning, and Tyler Hagedorn, the starting five for the Yotes. And for South Dakota State, in their home white uniforms tonight, they're going to be led by the player of the year in the league, Mike Dumb, the junior from Kimball, Nebraska. Jenkins Jr., the freshman of the year, telling Hughes and King and Flatten. Terry Oglesby. South Dakota native Kelly Pfeiffer and Rob Kuhneman, the officiating crew, and we're underway. The Jacks controlling the opening tip. A lot of experience on this team. These guys have been in this game before, other than Jenkins, the true freshman. Telling Houston with the shot fake. And will pull it back out, 10 to shoot. Here's Mike Dom. Telling Houston contested three and it misses badly. And here comes South Dakota for the first time and nearly a turnover. It's going to stay with the Coyotes, but Tevin King and David Jenkins Jr., that's the kind of defense they play. They're going to try and give South Dakota fits tonight. Packed house here in Sioux Falls. The Summit League Championship game between the Coyotes of South Dakota and the Jackrabbits of South Dakota State. The Jacks trying to win this tournament for their third straight year. Alongside Sean Harrington, I'm Clay Mapfick. And these were the two best teams in the league this year. They played for a right to represent this conference in the NCAA tournament. King from the corner for South Dakota State. He's off the mark. And South Dakota, really good defensive team, has forced South Dakota State into two long possessions early on. Big key to this ball game. South Dakota wants to slow down South Dakota State's offense. A little bit of jitters here early on, some off shooting. Both teams looking for that first basket to go in to settle into their offense. Here's number 24, Mike Dom for South Dakota State, the player of the year in the conference. He comes up empty. He's been the two-time MVP of this tournament. We're almost two minutes into this contest, no scoring for either side. Peterson catch and shoot, and he rattles one home, so the Oats are on the board first. Good job of penetration from Birch Manning to suck in the defense and allow Peterson to step in behind him. The sophomore from Lino Lakes, Minnesota with the first basket. Dom will try another three, and this time he connects. He is a triple threat. Because of that length, he can shoot over the defense, and you got to go out there and defend him. Really good shooter from three. Hagedorn misses on that hook shot, and the rebound brought down by Tellinghusen for South Dakota State. 
Dom, nice pass to King cutting in. Wide open is Flatten, and he buries the three. And that's going to be the chess match all game long. Do you send the double on Dom where he is really good on the blocks, but a good passer as well. Two great passes there on offense. Mooney slashes in, and he's got his first basket. He has scored four, uh, 34 times this year, twice against South Dakota State this season. He likes playing against South Dakota State, and he's a big gamer. And the lights are the brightest. That's when he plays his best. Jenkins will get to the free throw line. As you look at Craig Smith, former Tim Miles assistant, not his fourth year at South Dakota. Last year's Summit League Coach of the Year, and he has done a great job with this program. Really has this program going in the right direction. Won the conference last year, now playing in the conference championship this year. T.J. Otzelberger on the other side. He's in year number two. And he won the Coach of the Year award in the conference. Trying to get this team back to the NCAA tournament. David Jenkins makes it 8-4 South Dakota State here in the early moments. There's Trey Birch Manning. This will be a big matchup. King and Mooney going back and forth on that end. Trey Birch Manning. Second team all summit. He's had a good tournament here in Sioux Falls. And that's not what he does. Steph Maddox shooting the three. That's only his sixth made three of the season. He does just about everything else for this team, including guarding one through five on the defensive end. A nice looking shot there from three. Don the shot fake. And that's going to be an offensive foul on the player of the year. Hagedorn doing a great job standing his ground for the Coyotes. That's knowing your scouting report right there. Not biting on the shot fake, moving your feet, sliding over. Taking charge, that'll be big, obviously. Getting down in foul trouble early changes this offense. Tevin King commits the personal. First media timeout, South Dakota State by one. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal. Investments, retirement, insurance, and talks. Welcome back to Champ Week, presented by Principal. The Denny Sanford Premier Center here in Sioux Falls alongside Sean Harrington. I'm Clay Mantic. This will decide the summit here tonight. 8-7 South Dakota State leading early. And we've been talking to a lot of folks this week, and they're saying this is the biggest sporting event in the history of the state. Do you think that's an overreach? Well, judging by this crowd, maybe not. It is yeah. a packed house, and everybody has been excited for it. This is one versus two. This is exactly what you want. The two best teams who split the regular season, each winning on their home court. This decides it all to go to the NCAA. All right, let's take a look at Going Gold presented by Axe, and we look at standout performer Mike Dom for South Dakota State. He has had back-to-back double-doubles in this tournament. He's just been outstanding all season long, putting up video game-like numbers. He has been able to score 30 or more 12 different times. He can do it from scoring on the block. He's capable of stepping out and knocking down threes. He uses his length to shoot over a defender. He's a very difficult matchup for an opponent. You guard him with a small, he takes you on the block. You guard him with a big, he can take you off the balance for the mid-range jumper. Two-time league player of the year. His 20th double-double last night with 19 and 11. Had 33 and 19 in the quarterfinals. In six career games against South Dakota, he has scored at least 18 points. Two times he's had a double-double. And so far, he's had an impact in this game, but he's also been stopped once by Hagedorn. He's going to have the tough task matching up against him most of the night. And we also saw when he caught on the block, South Dakota sent a double team to try to get out of his hands to not be able to score around the rim. Trey Birch Manning misfires. And that's going to belong to South Dakota as telling Houston stepped on the line trying to save it. 
26 wins. Division I program record for the Coyotes. They got seven guys averaging seven points or more. Mooney, number 13, who shoots here. He gets most of the attention, but this is a pretty balanced bunch. And a really good job of reading the screen that time. Defender goes under the down screen. Mooney steps right behind it and buries a three. He's got half of the Coyotes points. They take the lead by two. Dom tries another three and he hits it. The confidence in his shot. That's why you have to be there on the catch on Mike Dom. Because of his length, he can shoot right over you, especially if he has time. And Mooney answers right back with a two. Mooney's tough. He can make a three. There's a mid-range jumper we saw earlier in the ballgame getting all the way to the basket. He likes contact. He creates contact when he goes off the dribble. Why not? Not that time. Trey Birch Manning quickly brings it ahead for the Coyotes and attacks. Goes right at Dom. Spits it out for Hagedorn. And Dom with the rebound. And I like the push by Birch Manning to try to maybe pick up another foul on Dom in the lane. King got his own miss. He coughs it up. Here come the Coyotes again. Simpson to the trailing Mooney. Manning travel. Trey Birch Manning gives it up. We get a stoppage here and we remind you that tomorrow night on Wednesday NBA doubleheader has the Pistons and Raptors at 8 Eastern and then LeBron and the Cavs take on the Nuggets. Starts with NBA countdown at 7 Eastern on ESPN. Harried pace to this one early. And this is Brandon Key into the game for the first time for South Dakota State. Dom trying to put back his miss, can't do it. Key a lightning quick guard and he reaches in on Mooney. Mooney putting the pressure on the defense. That's off of a miss basket. South Dakota likes to get opportunities in transition when available. Saw Simpson pushing the possession before. That time Mooney taking it. Mooney, fade away. Miss Padley. And Key wastes, wastes no time. Got it and one. The Juco transfer from Milwaukee. Get a chance at a three-point play. South Dakota State has really quick guards. They can get out and score in transition. This time it's Brandon Key. Tevin King also can push it in transition. If you are South Dakota, you must get back, protect the basket first. Really good push in transition from Brandon Key. He goes back to the Jacks by one. Nick Fuller into the game, the Nebraska transfer for the first time here tonight for South Dakota. Well, Mooney starting to lather up now for the Oats. Just has so much confidence in his game. That is a big time move. Rips the ball through, one dribble pull up. Good elevation on the shot. It's tough to guard. Key attacks. Wild up and under shot. South Dakota quickly back the other way, led by Tristan Simpson. Fuller, the floater, got it! Oh, they're going to call an offensive foul. Kelly Pfeiffer, the backside official, calling the charge. All three officials kind of looked at each other. Who had the best angle? Who had the best view? Looks like Brandon Key has his feet set. He's standing stationary. Kind of a weird angle to take the charge. Boy, Brandon Key has been such a spark off the bench for T.J. Otzelberger, the junior from Milwaukee. You know, the South Dakota State team came out flat against Western Illinois in the quarterfinals. Shot under 33%. Last night, blew out North Dakota State. Shot 
And things are going their way here for the most part early on as another opportunity for Key at the line. Really hard to keep the South Dakota State guards out of the lane. They have a quick first step. This is the second time now we've seen Brandon Key attack the basket. First in transition, now in the half court. Now he's been unable to convert those three-point opportunities. Yeah, leaving points at the line, really important championship game. Every possession, every point matters. Both teams solid at the free-throw line on the year, mid-70s. And Hurst is fouled. That's so I'm telling Houston. Carlton Hurst, third game back for South Dakota after missing 13 games with a right hand injury. He's wearing a glove again tonight. He could be the X factor tonight for the Coyotes. Yeah, really good defensive player, tough player, freak athlete as well. Tough for South Dakota when he went out. Says he doesn't have any residual pain, but he's not exactly at 100% either. Transfer from Colorado State. Puts South Dakota back in front. Really coming back from that injury. Any points that Hurst can give him as a bonus, what he brings is that energy, leadership, toughness. Especially on the defensive end. Fourth year this tournament has been played inside the Denny Sanford Premier Center here in Sioux Falls. It is a packed house there, expecting to set a record tonight. Jenkins drives, and the freshman of the year has been impressive here this week. You're going to hear a lot about him in the Summer League for the next three years. That freshman is impressive. He can get to the rim, knocks down threes as well. He had a game-high 24 yesterday, and he'll get the rebound here. And that was after a 1-for-4, 1-for-10, I should say, shooting game in the quarterfinals. He took that personally and responded well. He misses a wild shot. Peterson driving into the lane, and another offensive foul. And we've got a timeout with 11.32 to go in the half. It's been a back and forth affair. And that will be all for the 2,000 point scorer, Tyler Nelson, the senior for Fairfield. They recruit to love each other. You can see that's the way Sidney Johnson feels. The emotion of Champ Week will continue through Sunday here on ESPN. This is the Summit League Championship. I'm Clay Bathick. He's Sean Harrington. And what a great rivalry this is. Goes back a long way. And South Dakota State, Sean, beat the Coyotes 76-72 less than a couple of weeks ago in Brookings to clinch the regular season championship outright for the first time. If South Dakota can win here tonight, it will bring some balance to this rivalry. It'll be good for the league, too, in a lot of ways. And also, South Dakota lost in the semis to South Dakota State last year in a really hard-fought battle. So they've had a bitter taste in their mouth ever yeah. since. They've been looking forward to this for a year. Out of bounds, it's going to stay on this end. South Dakota State on a 10-game win streak. They haven't lost since January 24th at South Dakota in Vermilion. Jack's going for their fifth straight trip to the big dance. South Dakota has never been in the NCAA tournament. Now, they've only been Division I for a decade. And Fuller is going to get to the line. You and I have seen a lot of Nick Fuller over the years mostly when he was wearing red of a different shade down in Lincoln. Transfer from Nebraska. Craig Smith was on that staff with Tim Miles. Developed a relationship. And... Dom is going to go to the bench, Sean. He has two personals. And obviously a huge story in this ballgame. That's your 
Conference Player of the Year. Always, do you leave him out for the half? Do you bring him back? I imagine. I'm going to try to steal a few minutes here or there in the first half so he doesn't have to sit for 11 minutes. Jenkins hits the three. That's already our 11th lead change. Jenkins is very capable of putting up huge numbers. A freshman hit 30 on the road twice. Once at Denver and once at Colorado. You see that out of a freshman too often going down the road and putting up big numbers. What a find for T.J. Otzelberger out of Tacoma, Washington. That was halfway down. Didn't get it. Telling Houston gets the long rebound. Foul against the Jackrabbits. It's the second on King. Flatten's going to come back in. Big 12 tournament tomorrow. Sprint Center in Kansas City gets underway. Oklahoma State against Oklahoma. It's at 7 Eastern on the U. Texas and Iowa State at 9. If Oklahoma loses that game, Sean, could, could you see the committee keeping Trey Young and the Sooners out? Very possibly. You, you lose that game, it is going to be a long wait to Sunday to find out if you're in. Do everything you can to pad that resume. Good thing for Oklahoma is they got a lot of good quality wins. They beat Wichita State, they beat Kansas. You start looking at some of those other bubble teams who would have wins like that on their resume. against Trey Birch Manning, his second, sixth against South Dakota. It's been hard for a team to find a real rhythm here. A lot of emotions early on. Slow start for both teams. Now the fouls starting to pick up a little bit. Some offensive fouls each way. Telling Houston goes inside to Severin. Lane Severin working hard. He's coming off a real big game the last time these two teams met. Yeah, 14 and 8. The guy that just averages over three a game. South Dakota State would love to get him going in this rivalry. Simpson tracks it down at the timeline. Still a lot of time to shoot. Hagedorn for three. High arcing shot is short. Keel bring it to the middle. South Dakota State with their star player on the bench with two fouls. Mike Dom telling Houston. Buries another long range shot for the Jackrabbits. And it's time out. The seniors played in a lot of these games. Over 1,400 career points for Telling Houston. Jacks by seven now. Well, South Dakota State starting to heat up now on an 8 nothing run. And Reed Telling Houston has played a lot of Summit tournament games. It was impactful as a freshman. A little the glue guy on this team. He's a Summit honorable mention. Out of the timeout, Simpson stops the run for South Dakota. Simpson shooting 34% from three. He's had seven multi-three games. Capable of stepping out. That's a good response from South Dakota out of the timeout to stop the run. He's coming off of season high 20. And now Jenkins with a long two. He's busting out all the tricks now. That's the step back. 
Real long two foot on the line. Peterson rises up, and he buries it. Well, there's that rhythm I was talking about early that these teams seem to be lacking. Now they're both into it. Shooting off the move. Jenkins on one end. Peterson coming off the screen on the other. Jenkins pick and roll. And on the roll, he has it stripped. Out of bounds with 7.44 to go here in the first. It's a good one here in the summit. been a great week here in Sioux Falls Summit League Tournament culminating with this championship game between South Dakota and South Dakota State the summit Sean has been a one bid league since 91 when Green Bay and Northern Illinois both got in it was known as the Mid-Continent Conference then but this league has shown a lot of growth and North Dakota joins this fall that's going to renew some of those old rivalries in the Dakotas this league is just on the rise and the fans show up it, this is an incredible atmosphere every single year we've been very fortunate to be a part of it it never disappoints we've had really good games in the championship and really good atmospheres crowds out of a timeout the freshman stays hot Jenkins jr. hits the turnaround tell you what a lot of schools will be disappointed they let him get out of their hands Really talented freshman. He's going to be an impact player for four years here in the Summit. His 27th game in double figures. Already with 11 in this one. Fuller and the lefty misses badly. Mike Dom still on the bench. South Dakota State's been able to extend this lead a little bit with him there with the two fouls. Foul underneath, Lane Severin crashing into Fuller. Both are going to be okay. That's the seventh team foul on South Dakota State, so that'll put USD at the line. First on Severin. There you see Mike Dumb. NBA scouts here eyeing him up. Just a junior, good chance. He goes to the NBA, but also a very good chance he comes back for a senior year in Brookings. Yeah, I'm sure he's going to take a look at the process, kind of hear what people have to say. Very talented offensive player. He can score outside, inside. I'll tell you what, he comes back. He's going to have a chance to set all kinds of records. He'll also have a shot at getting 3,000 career points. Uh, things look good for T.J. Otzelberger going forward. They could have four of their five starters back next year if Dom returns. I know Skylar Flatten's getting a sixth year from the NCAA. He had a knee injury a couple of years ago that kept him out. Severin for three, you bet. Look out if he gets hot. The Coyotes know that he can do that. And South Dakota saw him go for 14 and 8 the last time they played. First misses in close for South Dakota. Great execution, just didn't finish the playoff. Then he got all the way in through the defense. First couldn't finish. David Jenkins has his pocket picked by Mooney. Mooney has it swatted by Flatten. Skyler Flatten, the senior from Clark, South Dakota, jacked up to be playing in this one for sure. Good defensive play on one end for Mooney. He pushed it all the way in transition to Flatten. Able to trail the play and get it out of there. He is a high riser. He's had some injuries in his career. And he's starting to look like the player athletically that South Dakota State was hoping they had. That clangs not for Mooney. He's four of nine from the field, sitting on nine points. Telling Houston drives. Rolls off, but he'll be at the line.
Henry telling he has been an impact player since his freshman year and some big tournament games here at the Summit. So it makes an impact that early as a freshman. You feel like he's been here forever. Yeah. But just really good career numbers. Does a little bit of everything for this team. The ACC tournament bracket at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn tomorrow at noon. Florida State and Louisville will go head to head. Then NC State takes on Boston College. BC winning today. Notre Dame with a big win. We'll take on Virginia Tech tomorrow. That was a much needed win for the Irish. Big bubble day tomorrow in the ACC. Syracuse, Louisville, Notre Dame all need wins to keep that tournament hope alive. Tristan Simpson doesn't get the bounce. Telling Houston sails in for the rebound. This is the biggest lead for the Jackrabbits. King trying to add to it and does. Brandon Key. This is a danger zone right here for South Dakota. Mooney draws the blocking foul. And he'll go to the line for the one and one. Brandon Key so fast, Sean. Now these guards can make you pay in a hurry. We've seen Key get all the way to the rim in transition and also in the half court. They put so much pressure on this defense. You have to get back, protect the basket, and build out. Brandon Key showing how quick he can get up and down the floor off the bounce. Matt Mooney misses the front end. First miss at the line for the Coyotes in this game. And Mooney doesn't miss many, an 82% foul shooter. South Dakota needs to lock in here and get a stop. South Dakota State's feeling comfortable on offense right now. Flatten who leads the summit in three-point percentage, just under 50% coming in. Misses that one from long range. Under five minutes to go opening half. Winner goes on to the NCAA tournament. If it's South Dakota, it will be a first in program history. The Coyotes are down here by double digits. Mooney with five to shoot, spins and loses it. Here comes Key. Key. Well defended by Armstrong. Good job getting back that time, making it difficult on Key. Looked like he was going to have another easy one. Another offensive foul, this one away from the ball on Tristan Simpson. That is the fourth offensive foul against the Coyotes. And just trying to push it in transition to make something happen. It's a little bit out of control. You come to that jump stop. You set your teammate up. When you move into the defender, you're going to get called for that. Five turnovers now against South Dakota. Key left alone for three. The transfer from Air Force, Matt Mooney. And another offensive foul against him. Key baited him in that time. Offensive foul, holding his ground. Frustrating night right now for South Dakota. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Ally. Do it right. He's done a great job. He's got 11 for South Dakota State, who lost dumb at the 11-11 mark with those two personal fouls. Since then, they've gone on an 18-7 run, and now Mooney for South Dakota picks up his second personal with that offensive foul, and he's wearing it on his sleeve right now. Yeah, very frustrating night right now. Some offensive fouls for South Dakota. They got to make sure they keep their emotions in check. I'll give Kelly Pfeiffer a little bit of credit there. Potentially could have teed up Mooney, showed yeah. a lot of emotion. But he understands conference championship. He, he let that one go. David Jenkins Jr. rolls to the hoop. 
Nobody cuts him off. Two more. Jenkins, true freshman. He can go right, he can go left. He's already showed how he can shoot the basketball as well. Tyler Peterson hits a much needed shot for the Coyotes who had missed their last five before that mid. South Dakota needed something on the offensive end. They need to keep Mooney in there. He's got those two fouls. He needs to be careful not to pick up a third before the half. But they need his leadership and offense on the floor being down nine. Jenkins, yes, over the top of Fuller's outstretched arm. He's doing everything right now for South Dakota State. He did go to a prep school, so played an, an extra year out of high school, but this is an impressive freshman. He does a lot on the floor. Fuller can't finish. And Severin with the rebound. Here's Key. Kicks it out. Telling Hewson. Bangs home the three. has swelled to 15 for the Jackrabbits. It is remarkable what South Dakota State has done with their star on the bench, Mike Dunn. And that's why this team is dangerous. They have all kinds of weapons on the floor. Jenkins with a three, and then Telling Houston there to force South Dakota to call the timeout. They're not going to amp up their defense. Out of a timeout, backing his way in. Hagedorn, that right hand hook shot goes for Tyler Hagedorn, who's had a breakout season. A junior from Norfolk, Nebraska. Good execution to give a score now. South Dakota needs a stop. Look at alley -oop. Flatten flushes it down on the feed from King. That's just great communication between two guys. Defender turns his head. Mooney brings South Dakota State back on the other end and hits a three. Telling Hughes Again from Key. Boy, he is giving South Dakota State great minutes off the bench. And that's the problem right now for South Dakota. They cannot keep South Dakota State out of the lane, putting too much pressure on this defense, getting open looks. Fuller driving. Hagedorn with the mop up. And South Dakota now scoring. They got to get it done on the defensive end. It starts with guarding the basketball here. Can they keep it out of the lane? Flatten splits the defense, drives, misses, and Mooney will come out of there. It's a three in his pocket. Doesn't hit it. Jenkins. No hole for one now. I like Mooney pulling up. He went for the two for one there. Okay with that quick three, and now you want to make sure you get the last shot of the half. Be big if you can cut this to 10 or 9 with a three. I'll get the ball in Mooney's hands. Got to be careful not to pick up any kind of a foul. Three on the clock. Mooney falling away, left it short. South Dakota State in its sixth title game appearance in the last seven years in their fourth straight. And they look like the veteran team in the first half, even without Mike Dom on the floor for a lion's share of it. The score here at the half, South Dakota State 47, South Dakota 35. Kevin, Seth, and Jay after these messages.
by principle. We're in the Sioux Empire tonight, ready to crown a champion in the Summit alongside Sean Harrington. I'm Clay Matvick. And it's a lead for South Dakota State at the break, a significant one, a dozen points. And that's despite their player of the year, Mike Dom, spending most of that first half on the bench with foul trouble. Yeah, you were expecting South Dakota State to maybe struggle yeah. if Dom picked up fouls, but instead they have flourished, and it's because of a freshman. A very veteran group has relied on the freshman, and David Jenkins Jr. has just been terrific here in the first half. He can score in a variety of different ways. He can get to the rim. He's strong. He can finish going right or left. He's got a nice mid-range shot, and he's just showing all the tricks today, knocking down threes as well. This is a terrific find for TJ Otzelberger and South Dakota State. This freshman is impressive. Dom played only seven minutes in the first half. He went out at the 11-11 mark. Hit a couple of threes before picking up those two fouls, but Jenkins, yeah, carrying the Jackrabbits. Also, Reed telling Houston, couple of big threes in that first half. He is now the all-time leader in three-point makes at South Dakota State. The Jacks lead it by a dozen. That's tipped out of bounds. It'll stay with the Coyotes trying to dig out of a hole here in the second half. And it'll be Mooney that'll lead him back, you would think, if South Dakota can make a charge. Yeah, he was four of six out of the gate. So really hot start for Mooney, and he was just one of six the rest of the way. But he's going to be the guy that's got to lead the charge. Offensively, it wasn't too bad for South Dakota. A couple lulls there. But they got to pick it up on the defensive end, and that's where they've hung their hat the entire season. A really good defensive team gave up 47 points in that first half. Yeah. And it was really controlling the dribble. They need to keep South Dakota State out of the lane. Too much penetrate and kick to open shooters and finishes at the basket. Here's King. He got into some foul trouble in the first half, too, but makes an impact here early in the second half. And that's where you see the attack. King gets all the way to the rim, couldn't finish, but good job staying with it. Second chance. Tristan Simpson sees a rattle out from three, but King gives it back to the Coyotes as he gets lost at his feet. King, the junior point guard from Chicago, very gritty. He's been more of a scoring threat this year, averaging 10 points per game. And known as their defensive stopper, Mooney misses the field goal attempt. There's the double team. King gets it out to Tellinghusen. Air ball. And the Coyotes fans will let him hear it. These schools, Sean, great rivals. Brookings, South Dakota, the home of the Jackrabbits, located an hour north of Sioux Falls. And the University of South Dakota in Vermilion, located an hour south of Sioux Falls. Trey Birch Manning. We haven't heard from him in a while. And he attacked Dom that time. Dom did not want to pick up a third foul quick in this second half. It's a really good job by Birch Manning to attack Dom, take it right at the bigger defender. Dom for three. That's his third. You would think sitting on the bench for all that time in the first half, maybe he'd have to get a little feel for the game, but he just steps out and buries his first three attempt. Belongs to South Dakota State. Man, he has a smooth stroke for a 6'10 big man. Yeah, and he's so long. That's, that's the key there is even when the defender gets out there to contest a shot, he can shoot over you, and he knows he can shoot over you, so he shoots it with confidence. Well, that's not going to get blocked, and you have to be there on the catch. Another wide open look. Now he's in double figures despite spending most of his ball game on the bench with foul trouble. Now he's asking the crowd to get into it. And Mooney having an opposite kind of night from Dunn. His impact has been mild. 
Oh, that was halfway down. That was the heat check there. That was deep. Simpson. And Dom with the rebound. 17 minutes to play here in Sioux Falls. The winner goes on to the NCAA tournament. South Dakota State has been there four times in their Division I history. The Coyotes of South Dakota have never been to the big dance. Here's Simpson off the pick. He's in free flight. And King with the rejection. Pinned it right up against the board. How about that defensive play? Kevin King comes out of nowhere. And now King called for the offensive foul. This is the kind of night it's been for South Dakota. They think they have an easy one off of the steal. And out of nowhere, Tevin King says it's not going to get any easy ones here tonight. But he's going to head to the bench for the Jackrabbits. He has just picked up his third. And you bring in Brandon Key, who plays very similar to Tevin King. Yeah, not a bad switch. Yeah, more speed. Another good defender as well. Mooney has a dozen, but they've been spread out. He drives and draws the contact. It'll be a foul on Reed Tellinghusen. And that's his second. New South Dakota now. You guys are chipping away at this. You can't think you're going to get it all back in one possession. That's an offensive foul on Fuller. I don't know that I've seen this many offensive fouls called in a game this year, and we still have 16 minutes to play. You just have to be under control when you're going to the basket. Sometimes that's out of frustration. The guys aren't getting easy looks, and they're just trying to bulldoze their way to the rim to get a quick basket or an easy basket. Now Peterson slides over to cut off Key, and he commits the personal foul. And I think that's three on Peterson. It is. And he's going to go to the bench for the Coyotes. So Craig Smith has to sit his starter down. Full court pressure here by the Oats. Key works his way in deep. You lose King to foul trouble, you bring in Key. Pretty nice to have that weapon off the bench. He can get into the lane and score as well. Mooney misses, gets his own shot. Fuller throws it up. Birch Manning says that's enough. I'm just gonna flush it in. The lead got to 20. But South Dakota needed a basket, and they got it from Trey Birch Manning. It ends an 8-0 run. And that's a hustle play inside for Birch Manning. Don. He's had a good night shooting from outside. Misses there. All of his points have come on threes. Mooney, the running floater. Couple, Look out if he gets out. Yeah, a couple buckets in a row now for South Dakota. Continue to get stops here. Chip your way back into it. Get some momentum back on your side. Got to keep the basketball out of the lane. When this South Dakota State team gets into the lane. They got shooters around the perimeter. Drive and kick. Telling Houston adds to his record. That's his third three tonight. The school's all-time three-point shooter makes it 60 to 41. Fuller backside rebound, the stick back and one. And he'll be at the line when we come back. The offense has been hot for South Dakota State. Mike Dumm, feeling his rhythm, knocks it down. They're feeling good about it. 17-point lead.
in the NCAA tournament. The Iona Gales have owned this MAC tournament. And for just the third time ever, there will be dancing in Greensboro tonight. And we're soon to crown a champion here in the Summit League in Sioux Falls. You see the tickets punched on the men's side. LIU Brooklyn getting in from the Northeast just before we came on here in the Summit League on ESPN2. Great performance so far for South Dakota State trying to get in for the fifth time. South Dakota, they've never been to the NCAA tournament. How about this crowd, Sean? 11,114 in attendance here at the Denny Sanford Premier Center, a new Summit League championship game record. It's an impressive atmosphere. They do a terrific job hosting this tournament. South Dakota State, South Dakota fans love their basketball. They come out and they watch it, and it has been a fun couple days. They got 8,700 in here for the women's championship game earlier today where South Dakota State beat South Dakota. It's been a colossal day in this state for college basketball. Jenkins goes to the 10, has it rejected. Hurst came over from the weak side. He shows what this team was missing while he missed those 13 games. Fuller on the feed from Mooney. And South Dakota trying to claw back in after getting down 20. And Simpson is called for the foul against Jenkins. The men's ACC tournament in Brooklyn continues tomorrow at noon with Florida State and Louisville. NC State and Boston College play tomorrow at 2 Eastern on ESPN. Syracuse, a, a must-win situation against North Carolina, you would think. Also, Notre Dame, they've got to win that game most likely to stay in the picture. Yeah, obviously, Bonzi Colson back. He's yeah. looked good. It's a different team with him in the lineup. He missed all those games with the injury, but they definitely need to win over Virginia Tech to be considered to get into the tournament. Jenkins has it swatted away by Trey Birch Manning. It will stay with the Jacks with six on the shot clock. Three Jackrabbits and double figures in this game led by Jenkins, who has 16. Dom in double figures with a dozen, but it's interesting to note, Sean, that he has no points in the paint. Four threes. Eight of his nine shots have come from the three-point land. Uh, Key and Flatten get their wires crossed. And that's the fifth turnover for South Dakota State. Dom's hobbling a little bit as well. He got tangled up on that inbounds play. Keep an eye to see if he can walk that off. Looney keeps his pivot foot. Trey Birch Manning steps into a two and banks it off the window pane. And Dom's hurting. Yeah, he's gonna. He's trying to walk it off. He's trying, trying to, to play it through it a little bit. But got tangled up on the inbounds play. And South Dakota, nice answer here, quietly chipping back into it. 11-3 run, and there is plenty of time in this ball game. You start taking this four-minute segments. Keep chipping your way back into it. Flatten, catch and shoot, three rattles in. South Dakota State seems to answer with big baskets. And again, it's drive, penetrate, and kick to the shooter. Armstrong from the free throw line extended. Severin snares the rebound for South Dakota State. Boy, that was a big three by Flatten because, like you said, South Dakota had the momentum there for a while. Yeah, they were chipping away. And again, it's getting to the lane, getting to the rim, and then kicking out to shooters. Mooney had 12 at halftime. That's off for Armstrong. Flatten goes up, grabs the rebound. He's tied up. Going to call a jump ball. Possession arrow will keep it on this in. No, it's going to go to South Dakota State. And Mooney's going to get a break right now, going to the bench. South Dakota needs him to make a push here. Right? We'll be pretty sure he's going to come back in after the under 12 timeout. 
So he's going to get a rest here to be ready to go the rest of the way. Had 12 points early, but he's been quiet ever since. Just two points here in the second half. Six of 17 from the field. The Summit League transfer of the year last year after coming from Air Force has had a big impact on this South Dakota program. The Jacks have really done a good job on him here in the second half. They have, and he had some tough shots early on and showed that he could get to the rim, mid-range and three. And South Dakota State's just rotated some fresh bodies on them to try to wear them down a little bit. It's been Key, it's been King, and it's been Jenkins. Trey Burge Manning just picked up his third. He and Peterson each with three now for South Dakota. Jenkins the blow by. Goes right to the rim. Dom said a hard screen. He was just waiting the entire possession there. Someone in South Dakota's got to call that out. Peterson just got laid out. Hagedorn from long range gets the three. First basket for Tyler Hagedorn of the second half. 14 point lead for South Dakota State with 11.40 to go. Jenkins, Whirly Bird, throws it up. That's another foul on Tyler Peterson. And he's got four now. And a huge screen. You got to call this one out, otherwise, you're going to get a teammate killed. It leads to the easy layup for Jenkins. South Dakota State's continuing to expand on this lead. Record crowd here in Sioux Falls of over 11,000 for the Summit League Championship game. We take a look at the Capital One fan vote. Fairly simple question. Which team that's the top seed likely to win its league tournament? Auburn out of the SEC, Kansas the Big 12, Virginia in the ACC, or Xavier in the Big East? Where's your vote, Sean? Oh, Kansas in that. You see the fan vote right now. Virginia in the lead at 28%. Auburn, they've had some injuries down the stretch here. Yeah, Auburn was looking really good early on, and it was a small team, even smaller. Anthony Mack Lamore went down with an ankle injury. He was done for the year. So it was a short rotation, but impressive year for Auburn. They can definitely make some noise, though, in the NCAA tournament. Got scorers all over the floor. First time in this tournament for David Jenkins Jr. And what a performance. 19 points now for the freshman. He does not play like a freshman. Able to get to the rim. He goes right, he goes left. Shoots it from deep, plays with a lot of confidence. Scored 30 or more twice on the road. You don't see freshmen do that too often. Hagedorn drives, uses the window. Peterson playing in foul trouble with the stick back. He's got four personals, but went right to the rim like he didn't have any fouls. And South Dakota continues to stay on the boards. Now a 12 second chance points. Jenkins falling back, hits another one. What a find. T.J. Otzelberger plucks him out of Tacoma. Hagedorn, another long ball for the big man. That's his second three of the half. And again, it's going to come down to defense for South Dakota. Are they going to be able to string a few stops together here to get this lead back into single digits? It's easier said than done, but keeping the basketball out of the lane and somehow finding a way to stop this freshman. David Jenkins, there's one way to do it. And then Jenkins trying to recover fouls Mooney. And that's the second on David Jenkins Jr. Boy, Mooney's lightning quick too. Quick hands that time on defense. We're just waiting for Matt Mooney to get it going here on the offensive end. 
South Dakota has not shot a good percentage tonight. They're under 39 percent, 21 of 54. Surprising considering they led the Summit League in field goal percentage at 48. Hagedorn drives. That's a high percentage shot. They need more of those. And he's knocked down a couple threes, so defense closes out to him that time. Good use of the shot. They get into the lane. Got it down to 11. Crowd getting into it. Here come the Coyotes fans. Key takes it in deep. He's done that a few times tonight. Well, that's been the answer for South Dakota State all night. Getting into the lane, scoring around the rim. Mooney throws to the corner. Armstrong waiting. One and done are the Yotes this trip. You got to really credit South Dakota, Sean. They were down 20 at one time here in the half. And it's not in their DNA to quit and give in. You know they're going to make a push, and they still have another one in them. Boy, somebody's going to stop Jenkins, though, for the Coyotes. These guards are strong, and they have a good first step to get by that defender. Mooney got it, and the foul. Severin fouls Matt Mooney on the perimeter. Now just waiting for Matt Mooney to start to light it up. He can get hot in a hurry. Still plenty of time for him. He brings South Dakota State, bring South Dakota back into it. Can't follow three-point shooter to bench on their feet. A little bit of life. Three-point play. And Trey Birch Manning is going to come back in as Craig Smith calls him up off the bench. Nine true road wins for the South Dakota team this year. They took losses at TCU, Duke, and UCLA, but that obviously toughened them up for league play, and they've had a terrific season. They've been in tough spots before, and they could claw all the way back. Yeah, they've been battle-tested, and this is a, a group that had success last year. Craig Smith challenged them in the non-conference season. Mooney swats it into the front row. See if that pays off here late in a championship game. Good defense coming over from the weak side. It's Mooney behind, didn't give up on the play, so he got beat off the dribble. King back in the game for South Dakota State. He's got three fouls. Dom, deep three. Wow, that should be a four-pointer. He was about three steps behind the line. And there's the answer again. I feel like South Dakota's going to make a push and another huge three-pointer. The threes. All of his points coming from outside the arc. He's five of nine from three. Now Dom goes in close. Hagedorn hacks him. And Mike Dom will be on the line. Steve Levy and Kenny Main have Sports Center tonight after the West Coast Conference Championship game on ESPN. Houston and Oklahoma City going at it. The Rockets looking to extend the win streak to 16. 76ers just two games away from the three seed in the East. And of course, Joey Brackets tonight. We'll talk about the automatic bids, which will include the Summit League. He'll have his predictions. That's all coming up on Sports Center 11 Eastern tonight. Five more auto bids today, including this one. Seventy eight sixty two South Dakota State. Jenkins pokes it into the back court. He has had a terrific night. Seven fifty nine to go here in the second half. South Dakota State has had all the answers and the answers have come from beyond the arc. A deep three from Mike Dom, the player of the year. That will be all for the 2,000 point scorer, Tyler Nelson, the senior for Fairfield. They recruit to love each other. You can see that's the way Sidney Johnson feels. What a moment. That's the snapshot of Champ Week so far. Continues through Sunday.
There you see Mike Dunn for South Dakota State. He has 17 points, six rebounds in this game. He's been the MVP of this tournament the last two years. I think it's going to happen again. And South Dakota State hangs on here. No question. He's probably the MVP for the third straight year in this tournament. Tristan Simpson out of the timeout can't connect for South Dakota, but they get a second chance. Armstrong leans in, doesn't get the basket, and he'll get a trip to the line. It is go time for the Coyotes. If they're going to make their first trip to the NCAA tournament, they've got to get a burst going here against the Jackrabbits. Yeah, down 16. You need to get it to single digits when you get to that under four media timeout. Put a little bit of pressure on South Dakota State. Telling Houston heads to the bench for State. He's got four fouls now. And Carlton Hurst is going to come in for the Coyotes. Right now, if you're South Dakota, you want to pick up the pressure. The problem with that is South Dakota State's guards have been able to get by and get to the basket. So pick up the pressure, try to turn them over. But if they get by here, they've been attacking in the open floor and finishing around the rim. Jenkins broke that press like an upper class. Seven and a half to go here in Sioux Falls. Dom calling for it. That's a great battle there with Mooney. Backing away. Nearly got it to go. It looked like it was right on the money. Very good defense for Mooney. He stood his ground, made Dom shoot a fadeaway. It's all you can do in that position when you're outmatched on the height. Mooney just picked up his third. And the seventh team foul against South Dakota. That's going to put Dom on the line. Another aspect of his game that makes him special. He shoots at 85% on the year. He's right around that for the career as well. And he gets to the line almost six and a half times a game. Just impressed with his touch. I mean, he's the prototypical stretch four. And he's 6'10. 250 pounds, junior from Kimball, Nebraska. There's mom. She was a terrific player in her own right back in the day. Seen a lot of good performances in this gym out of the Mike Dom. And Dom gets the rebound. Another Mooney miss. He's got 18 points, but he's also taken a lot of shots tonight. South Dakota State's done a really good job making Mooney work for those points, work for those shots. Peterson for three. Yes. Tyler Peterson, the guy that has won the nickname Cheeks. It's a big three for the Coyotes. And now they get the turnover. Trying to keep within the arm's reach of South Dakota State here in the late minutes. The follow by Mooney. And he's fouled. What an athletic play by Mooney to salvage that trip down the floor. And that's on flat in his first. And now South Dakota State calls a timeout with 6.14 to go here in the second half. A win tonight for South Dakota State. Sets a new team record for wins in a season and punches another ticket to the NCAA tournament. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal. Investments, retirement, insurance.
South Dakota State inching closer to a fifth Summit League title and a third straight. Mike Dom got in foul trouble early, but he has responded with a nice game. And it's been all out on the perimeter. Only about a third of his shots come from beyond the arc, but tonight it's a different story. Nine of his 11 attempts from deep. And he's made five of them. It's his athletic talent from mom, Michelle. She was a great player at Wyoming. And Mike's dad, Mitch, was also a great football player at Wyoming. A lot of schools wanted him. Ends up at South Dakota State. What a, what a find. And he very well could be an NBA draft pick this year. I'm sure he'll test the waters and, and hopefully gets good advice, whether that's go, whether it's come back. See where he's maybe projected to be. How would you advise him? You want to... You want Obviously, good advice is the biggest thing. What are they telling you? If there's not a guarantee of being drafted, he's had a wonderful career and has a chance to really put his name all over the NCAA record books. We're talking a 3,000-point score in his career if he comes back next year. And obviously, South Dakota State very successful in these first three years that he's been there. He's enjoying school. He's enjoying the team that he's on. Great defense by Hagedorn on Jenkins. South Dakota only down 11. They were down 20 here in the half. Still a lot of time, five and a half to go. You want to get the single digits before that media timeout. Hagedorn! Tyler Hagedorn with his third three of the second half. Put the pressure on South Dakota State. Make them continue to make plays. Big shot there. Now defensively, keep that ball out of the lane. They stay with the Jackrabbits with 14 seconds on the shot clock. Telling Houston checks back in for the Jacks. He's got four fouls. Eight nothing run for South Dakota to pull within eight. Mooney just picked up his fourth. Just a little too aggressive that time on the out-of-bounds play. This could be a one-and-one -one situation for Telling Hughes, and Peterson comes back in, and he's playing with four fouls. Obviously now, with Matt Mooney, you have to be very careful not to pick up the fifth. With five minutes to go. You need him in the ball game. Telling Houston a 73% free throw shooter. The senior from Sac City, Iowa, trying to get to the NCAA tournament again with this program that he has helped become a mid-major power. Lead back to nine. Excuse me, ten. Mooney in and out. Telling Houston rises up, gets the rebound. And another foul against the Coyotes. That'll send Telling Houston back to the line. That one spun around on Mooney. He thought it was in. But a really good rebound from Telling Houston in traffic. Second on Hagedorn. And the ninth team foul against South Dakota. South Dakota State, a very good foul shooting team at 76%. So they're in good shape right now. Yeah, the seal that the next one will put them at the line for two. Yep, sealing victories, closing out games, make your free throws, don't turn the basketball over. Two categories that South Dakota State is very good at. They're 12 of 16 at the line tonight. Mooney spinning, throws it up again. It's spit out. He can't buy a basket right now. Seven of 22 is Mooney today. Dom, not this time. And it's been there all night. 
That ball screen. The guards did a good job getting into the lane and throwing back to Dom. Peterson got the three. 83-74. Peterson only a 28% three-point shooter, but he has made a couple huge threes here late in this ball game. Keep it under single digits. 83-75. Jenkins the miss. Mooney head up. Attacks. Bumped by King. Foul on the floor. And Mooney. draws King's fourth personal foul. Under four minutes to go. Could be a great finish here in Sioux Falls. Kevin, thanks. Of course, Gonzaga last year knocked out South Dakota State in the first round of the NCAA tournament and went on to the final. So their ticket is punched. Now who's going to win the summit? It looked like South Dakota State was going to run away and hide here in the second half, Sean. They built a 20-point lead with 16 minutes left, but South Dakota is still in this game late. Yeah, and that's in their DNA. They're not quitting. They're not backing down. You knew they were going to make a run just when would they make it, and is there enough time to finish it off? This is a group that is battle-tested. They went to Duke. They were down 30 in that game, cut it down to 15. You go to Cameron Indoor and make a run on the Blue Devils. You're doing something. South Dakota beat the Jackrabbits in Vermillion by 19, almost came back to win in Brookings. They always give South Dakota State good battles. And now, the team that is seeking a first trip to the NCAA tournament has pulled to within six. And just a two-possession game. Dom taking matters into his own hands, rolls it up and in. He has spent most of the night out on the perimeter. They need a bucket. He went right into the lane. Good soft touch on the hook. Peterson misses the three this time. Flatten gets it to Jenkins with 3.20 to go. And Jack Rabbits are going to be patient here. They'd like to use some clock if they can. You got to make sure you continue to stay in attack mode as well, though. though. Finish it off with a hard penetrate and kick or get to the rim. Dom has five of these. Mooney, he'll be back on the line. Mooney with 22 points, seven rebounds. That's their third on Dunn. He picked up those two early. Played only seven minutes in the first half because of the foul trouble. Good job by Mooney to continue to get to the rim. And keep putting pressure on this defense. Right now, South Dakota State does not want to foul. They don't want to stop the clock. So if you can get into the lane, you're probably going to be able to get an easy finish at the basket. Mooney, 7 of 8 at the line tonight. 85-79, under three minutes to go. South Dakota State's had a lot of success. High ball screen and popping down. Jenkins cut off by Simpson. He'll walk it back up top. And you see the exact same thing. High ball screen. Pick and pop. Jenkins blows by Hagedorn, throws it up high. Dom goes up for the rebound. They're going to call a foul on the floor against South Dakota. Tristan Simpson. South Dakota switched the ball screen that time to take away the pop. That allowed the smaller Simpson to be down there on the block with Dom. That was why he was able to get the offensive rebound. That's the 10th foul on South Dakota, so the Jacks getting two the rest of the night. Dom hits the first.
mom approves. She probably worked with the Mike on those foul shots in the yard at one point. Armstrong, the shot fake, three ball, in and out. And telling Houston controls the rebound for the Jacks. They've got numbers. Smart move, pull it out. Playing against the clock right now. You want to shorten this game. Just want a few more possessions here if you're South Dakota State. Dom has scored eight of the last nine for the Jackrabbits. Five to shoot. Jenkins will take this field goal attempt and hit. That could be the dagger. The freshman, another huge bucket. Jenkins fouls Mooney. Jenkins now with 27. Just so impressive. Is a well contested shot. Jenkins just doesn't care, pulls up and just buries it. South Dakota State starting to feel it. A little bit closer to another NCAA bid. Can you imagine if Dom comes back next year, how good this team is going to be for South Dakota State? Four of the five starters could be back next year. Jenkins with all of his experience coming back. This is a team that has gotten old and they can stay old. They also have some freshmen that are redshirting this year that they're high on. Or had the luxury of redshirting them because of the experience they had coming back. South Dakota cuts it back to single digits with a minute 33 to go. Craig Smith. And the Coyotes lost to South Dakota State last year in the semis. That's going to be a jump ball, and it's going to belong to South Dakota. Again, the fight of this Coyotes team. Carlton Hurst comes back out. He served his purpose, a defensive specialist. Hagedorn. Look at this effort. Hagedorn was on the sideline, I believe. And it belongs to South Dakota State. NCAA bid on the line. Teams all over the floor getting after it, trying to steal the possession. Uh, bodies all over diving and just touching the end line. Great effort, great hustle. This is momentum carried him back to the sideline. Jenkins nearly lost it. And now he's fouled. Fourth on Trey Birch Manning. And South Dakota State will go back to the line. South Dakota almost had them trapped. Right there at half court, it's a tough place to get the basketball if you're South Dakota State. Comes down to making free throws. And the Jackrabbits fans starting to feel it. That loss in last year's semis for South Dakota really inspired this bunch to work hard and get back for another opportunity to win a big game in this tournament and possibly get to the NCAA tournament for the first time in program history. But right now, South Dakota State with an 11-point lead as we close in on a minute to go. That's the fifth on Peterson. He's done.
This is like a second home for South Dakota State. And the home court advantage at Frost Arena in Brookings is really good for the Jackrabbits. They have won 20 straight. It's the nation's longest current home win streak. But they get down here in Sioux Falls, and these Jackrabbit fans show up, and they get behind South Dakota State. And that's why they've had such great success in this tournament. And they played really well, and tonight, offensively, it's just been terrific. 48% from the floor, 50% from three. 81 from the line. They've done everything they've needed to do on the offensive end. They've answered every run from South Dakota. And talk about a couple weapons. Mike Dom, two-time player of the year in the summit. And then the freshman, David Jenkins Jr., has really stepped up his game. 29 here tonight. And he did a lot of damage when Mike Dom picked up two fouls early in the first half. The freshman, David Jenkins Jr., carried the load and extended that lead with Dom on the bench. Coyotes have to hurry. Mooney goes right to the rim, scores, and a timeout called by Craig Smith. And the Coyotes have one remaining. 45.8 seconds to go. This would be the fifth trip to the NCAA tournament for South Dakota State. Last year they got to the tournament, lost to Gonzaga in the first round. This is a team that, you know, I think would be a scary matchup for somebody in the first round of the tournament, South Dakota State. No question. You look at a guy with Mike Dom with experience, this would be a team now, they've all played in the NCAA tournament, so they're not going to be scared at the moment of going to the NCAA. They've played good teams. They've beaten some good teams as well this year. You talk about some difficult matchups. Mike Dom able to step out, knock down threes, can score around the rim. So how do you guard him? And then maybe the X factor, David Jenkins Jr. Very capable of putting up 30. He's done that a few times already this year, 29 here tonight. But it's a balanced team. It's a really balanced team. It's not just the Mike Dom show. He has carried this team. His numbers are off the charts for his career in this season. But multiple guys can make you pay. Reed Tellinghues on the line now. Another guy with experience has contributed for four years. As a freshman, had big numbers. He's got his fourth career double-double tonight. Dom and Telling Houston both with double-doubles in this championship game in the Summit. 35 seconds to play. Mooney goes back to the rack, scores. And again, Craig Smith calls a timeout. That's the final timeout for the Coyotes. What a couple of years it's been for Matt Mooney. He's just a junior, so he'll be back next year for Craig Smith. This is a program which has done some great things under Smith's leadership. Former Tim Miles assistant, and of course the coach now at Nebraska. And you can see a little of uh, Tim in Craig, you know, very vocal, very animated. Fun to talk to, and a smart man. Yeah, he's learned a lot from Tim Miles, and you know, some mannerisms the same as well, and, and a well-coached team. You could see it even the days when he was an assistant under Tim Miles. He always did a terrific job of preparing his team for the opponent. Scouting reports were on point. When you watched him take his team through a, a walkthrough or a shoot around, they were always really well prepared, so you knew he was gonna pay attention to detail and just really the climb that they've done here in those four years. You can see the win totals continue to go up. 26 wins, a Division I program record for the Coyotes. It's a program still really in its infancy, but it has you know, seemingly stepped up a notch since Craig Smith has come on board. But they're down 10, which is 32 seconds to go. Telling Houston for the Jackrabbits can run that baseline. He'll get it in to Jenkins. 
And Dom is fouled. He'll go back to the line with 28 seconds to play. The win streak will go to 11 for South Dakota State. Their last loss January 24th against these Coyotes in Vermilion. So they'll go into the NCAA tournament with some confidence. And, you know, we talked about this before. Despite South Dakota's nice year, this is a one-bid league here in the summer. Yeah, a lot of experience coming back for both of these teams. And they're not afraid to go out and challenge themselves in non-conference schedule, both of them playing high major teams. So Armstrong got fouled by Flatten. Not a wise move with 20 seconds to go. One thing you don't want to do on the defensive end right now, stop the clock. Just get out of the way, let them take that shot. Brandon Armstrong, he'll be back the sophomore out of San Antonio. North Dakota joins the Summit League next year. This league continues to grow. Always exciting to come to Sioux Falls and watch this tournament unfold. Obviously tough for South Dakota to be in this position. Two years in a row to go down to South Dakota State. But it is a program on the rise. And each year they've made that step. Now Craig's yep, emptying the bench and getting those players recognition they deserve. A really good season, back-to-back -back. successful seasons for South Dakota. Mooney, another 30-point game against the Jackrabbits. But South Dakota State is going to do it again. For the fifth time in program history, the Jackrabbits are going to the NCAA tournament. They've made it a three-peat here in Sioux Falls. Well, when Mike Dom got in foul trouble early in the first half, I'm sure the Jacks were concerned. I'm sure their fans were concerned. But they end up pulling out a 10-point win here in the Summit League title game and back to the NCAA tournament for a third straight year. Jenkins with 29, Dom 25. In a losing effort, Mooney scores 30 for South Dakota. Impressive performance from South Dakota State. The two-time conference player of the year, Mike Dom with the 25, and the freshman Jenk has really stepped up. Telling Houston, again, showing the balance. He had 18, so there's a lot of weapons on this team. They celebrate here in Sioux Falls. 97-87 the final. Coming up next, tie break 10s featuring the Williams sisters. For Sean Harrington and our crew, I'm Clay Mappick. Thanks for watching. Congratulations to the Jackrabbits of South Dakota State going back to the big dance.